If you're new to league rankings and comparing different leagues and you don't really know where the NCDC stands, first of all, we're just gonna dive right in, like show how the NCDC compares to the other leagues in terms of caliber, cost, and exposure. What's going on guys, this is Brian from Advancement Hockey Advising here. Today, we'll be talking about how the NCDC compares to other Tier 2 Junior Hockey Leagues. This topic is super polarizing, it's definitely the most polarizing out of any of the leagues when it comes to the NCDC, so obviously I'm going to open up a little bit, bit of heat for me and uh, you know, it's classic HA fashion. I always like to do these controversial videos here and see what the Keyboard Warriors have to say. Keyboard Warriors, love you guys. Now before I dive into the video here of comparing the NCDC to the other leagues and get absolutely chewed apart by the Keyboard Warriors, why don't you guys absolutely destroy that like button instead of leaving a mean comment and if you're new here consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never mi miss another video moving forward all right let's dive right into the comparison here if you're new to league rankings and comparing different leagues and you don't really know where the ncdc stands first of all check out our video of the updated 2022 junior hockey league rankings that are best for ncaa it's a great way to start and to see where it kind of falls in the whole you know hierarchy of the junior league so that's one thing to look at but obviously if you're a dedicated AHA follower, you guys know your stuff. We're just gonna dive right in, like show how the NCDC compares to the other leagues in terms of caliber, cost, and exposure. All right, so in terms of caliber here, I have to say in terms of caliber and play style and everything, the NCDC, the closest league that it's most similar to is the CCHL. Very skilled league, not that physical, somewhat physical, somewhat structured, but not too, too physical or anything like that. It's, it's very, you know, focused on skill, has the same, you know, relative size. I mean, they just expanded to the NCDC West. I consider that a bit of its own league, to be honest. I, I see the NCDC, the Eastern side anyways, very similar to, to the CCHL in terms of like just commits, caliber, overall. It's the most comparative league, I would say. Some people do compare it to the OJ a little bit. I'd say the NCDC, I personally give it a slight edge over the OJ just because the OJ is a bigger league. The top teams in the OJ are very, very strong and probably beat most of the teams in the CCHL and the NCDC, but those are only like the top three, four to five teams, you know? The rest of the teams are either like middle of the pack and a lot of teams aren't very good at all in the OJ. So because it's a little bit watered down, I have to give the slight edge to the NCDC and maybe put the CCHL just, just a little bit over the NCDC. But again, I'm biased, I'm from Ottawa. So take my opinion with a grain of salt. Both the NCDC and CCHL, in my opinion, are neck and neck. So in terms of caliber, that's where I kind of see these guys. In terms of like how the NCDC compares to other leagues, like the NA and the BCHL, you know, I would say those are good, you know, step above the NA, being more structured, more physical with the same amount of skill. It's definitely a good step above in terms of caliber, in terms of commits and all that stuff. And then the BCHL, probably like not that physical in the BCHL, but very, very skilled. Even a little bit more skilled than the NA, I would say, but less physical, a bit less structured. So the BCHL, super, super skilled. So definitely a good tier above the NCDC. Now in terms of the NCDC compared to the AJ, the AJ is still a good tier above, I would say. If you look at our rankings, the AJ, we put them right below the BCHL and the NHL. Very, very good league, super physical league, super structured league, very big guys over there. So it really, it's hard to compare those two because NCDC is more skill-based. AJ is very, you know, physical and stuff, but similar, the NA still got a lot of skill in the AJ. So maybe, honestly, it's hard to say if the skill is neck and neck between NCDC and AJ, but the physicality and the structure and all that stuff, I would just say it's, it's a good tier above. Even the skill is probably a little bit above in the AJ as well. In terms of how the NCDC compares to the SJ and to the MJ, I would say the skill of the NCDC is probably a slight tier over the SJ and MJ, but the SJ and MJ are more physical, okay? So that's one thing to consider. I played in the MJ before. I played against a few SJ teams, super physical leagues. Honestly, pretty much all the leagues out West are super physical and the, the BCHL being a bit of an exception where it's more, you know, high end skill comport, compared to physicality. But overall, the NCDC has an edge, I would say over the SJ and the MJ in terms of like overall skill, but the physicality, you know, brings up for the SJ and MJ. So I'd say the NCDC, SJ and MJ there, it's hard to compare, but I give the slight edge to the NCDC, which is why in the rankings we write, rank them a little bit higher. And we're going to get to commits and stuff afterwards where they have a slight edge as well. All right, now in terms of exposure and commits, so diving into this now, in terms of the NA and BC, honestly, you can't even compare them. Though the NA and the BC just commit so many D1 hockey players, like some D3 guys, but mainly D1 guys. NCDC, 
it's not even in the same stratosphere. So you can't really compare them. Definitely a huge edge to the BC and the NA. In terms of the AJ, the exposure is similar and here, here's my thought process with it. So the AJ has a few top teams that just commit so many guys. Like Brooks commit probably almost their entire team every single season. You can't even, if you discount Brooks and discount a couple other top teams, the rest of the teams compared to the NCDC, the stats are quite similar in terms of D1 and D3 commits. So one thing to consider here if you discount the top teams. But overall, if you are counting the top teams, the AJ definitely takes the cake in terms of exposure and commits. Next, if you compare it to the CCHL and OJHL, per capita, honestly, it's all pretty similar across the board. So I, I'd say like it's pretty much the same playing field. Some years the NCDC a bit more than other years compared to the CCHL or OJ a bit more than other years, but overall very, very similar. And compared to the SJ and MJ, the NCDC has a bit of a slight edge in terms of exposure commits just because of their location, I would say. But uh, some SJ teams and MJ teams, however, have been committing some guys D1 recently, quite a few guys D1. So Steinbach, a great example. They've been committing a lot of guys in the last couple of years. So sometimes you see anomalies like that, but overall, I'd say on average, the NCDC probably has a slight edge here. All right, now in terms of cost, this one's really important because not everybody can just dish out 20K a season, right? In terms of cost, the NCDC, it's nice. It's free, league tuition, team, all that kind of stuff. The only thing you have to cover really is the billeting fees. So usually you're looking at, you know, between 400 to maybe 600 a month on average, you know, it could be more, a bit more, a bit less, but it should be around there. 500 is a good number to consider. So if you do that times however long you're in your season for, so maybe times you know six to eight months something like that you're looking at you know quick math three thousand to four thousand dollars something around those lines of billeting so it's not too too bad considering they pay your food and all that kind of stuff so it's not too bad in terms of compared to other leagues if you come here to the na the na is pretty much free across the board there's a few teams that make you pay billeting but overall it's free so the na has a slight edge on here for the bchl for the ajhl sjhl mjhl all the western tier two leagues in canada they used to be completely free to play it kind of changed since the pandemic some teams are charging billeting fees. Some teams are charging slight uh, team fees and all that kind of stuff, but still very, very cheap, very similar to the NCDC. Some teams are completely free as well. So it really varies across the board. And I feel like it might, it either is gonna go back to the free model or get, it's just the fees might start increasing more and more, but it, it's hard to say. It's hard to compare them, but overall the NCDC is free and some teams are free in the West and some teams charge a little bit, some teams charge billeting, some don't. So it, it's hard to compare. In terms of the CCHL, OJHL, those tier two leagues, in Canada, those charge something around the lines of like six to 10,000 a year, just like team and league fees plus billeting, okay? So they do charge quite a bit more than NCDC. So the NCDC definitely has the edge. So if money is a bit of an issue for you and you're the caliber of the NCDC, CC and OJ, in terms of exposure, it's pretty much the same. Caliber, it's very similar. So I would say if money's an issue, NCDC is a good league to consider. All right, so just a quick recap of the thoughts that I shared throughout this video here. So overall, my opinion of the NCDC is that it's a really good tier two league to go to that's free to play where you have to pay only the billeting fees and you get good caliber, good exposure. It's on par, I would say like very, very similar to the CCHL in terms of caliber, exposure and everything, but it has a slight edge on cost. Overall, those are my thoughts with the NCDC. Hopefully you guys don't chew me alive too, too much about my opinion here. All right, guys, that is it for the video here. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you got some value out of it and hopefully you understand how the NCDC is structured, what the caliber is, the commits are, the costs and everything. Hopefully it gave you a better idea as to how it all works in June your hockey so if you got some value out of this if you like the video if you haven't already absolutely destroy that like button and if you're new here consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward if you have any questions anything whatsoever feel free to drop a comment down in the comment section below or send us a private email at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible all right guys thank you so much for watching we'll catch you on that next one